mtazamaji moja kwa moja kutoka studio zetu za CAC TV hapa jijini Nairobi karibu hizi hapa ni taarifa za CAC Macho jina langu ni Aida Munzati naomba wandamani nami hadi mwisho wa taarifa hizi Bunge la kitaifa limeidhinisha uteuzi wa Nurdin Haji kuwa mkurugenzi mkuu kwenye shirika la huduma za ujasusi nchini NIS Haji atachukua nafasi ya Meja Jenerali Philip Kameru ikiwa ataidhinishwa na Rais William Ruto. Kwa sasa Haji anashikilia afisi ya mkurugenzi wa mashtaka ya umma. Because of the good deeds that we do in society. So indeed it is because of that fact and the discipline that he got from his father that he is found forever in his, uh, some of the offices that he's worked in, but that does not withstand the fact that he's equally a very hard-working uh, person, an extremely humble uh, fellow. We scrutinize the personal, academic, and career background of the nominee, and we are fully convinced that he fits the role of the Director General of National Intelligence Service. Indeed, we established that that the nominee, Mr. Nurdin Mohamed Haji, meets the requirements of Chapter 6 of the Constitution on Leadership and Integrity, having been cleared from the following statutory bodies. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. DG, Mr. Speaker, I know this. What is coming out is Nurdin is a queen, sensual, pragmatic intelligence officer, Mr. Speaker, and I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to contribute to the further transformation of our intelligence community. Na mkuingineko Rais William Ruto wameapa kwamba serikali yake haitendelea kuchukua mikopo. Akisema kwamba taifa lipo katika hali mbaya kimadeni. Ruto wa wa Kenya kukubali kulipa ushuru. Akisema kuwa ndiyo njia peke itakayowawezesha serikali ya makuiwezesha serikali kwa fikia malengo yake. Tarifa hiyo kwa kina nae Vincent Kerosi. Oda. Huku msaada wa fedha mwaka 2023 ukitarajiwa kuwasilishwa bungeni uakti wa wote kuanzia sasa msaada huo ulozua pingamizi kali dhidi ya mapendekezo ya ushuru zaidi kwa mkenya mlipa ushuru Rais William Ruto amesisitiza kwamba njia peke ya kujiondoa kwenye kinamasi cha madeni ni kupitia ukusanyaji ushuru Nyinyi mnataka tuendelee kukopa pesa Inchi yetu ikuje mwisho ikakuwa bankrupt Tumekopa pesa in the last eight years kutoka trilioni ine, sasa imefika trilioni tisa. Saa hii Kenya hiku mahali ambapo tusipochunga inaweza kuteleza. Rais Ruto amegusia kwamba taifa lipo katika hali hatari kwa ukubwa madeni linayodaiwa na kusema kwamba serikali yake haipo tari kujiweke kwenye vitabu vya historia mbaya ya kulitosa taifa katika jinamizi la madeni. Munataka tuendelee kukopa? Mumesema tuwajana na kukopa? Wale wanasema tuwajana na kukopa ni yone kwa mkono? Eh. Sasa hiyo ni amuri ya wananchi. Sinamna hiyo? Hatuwezi kuendelea na kukopa. Na mimi nataka ni wakikishie, I will not be the president who will take this country into the cliff because of borrowing. Let me take this opportunity first of all. Mbali na hayo vita dhidi ya pombe haramu zimeshika kasi Rais na naibu wake Rigathi Gashagwa wakiapa kutolegeza kamba dhidi ya watengenezaji na wauzaji wa pombe haramu na dawa nyingine za kulevya. Mambo ni mawili. Mambo ni ngapi? Katika area yako, location yako. Hatuwezi kuwa na chief na tukuwe na pombe. Ukweli ni kwamba pahali pombe yote iko hao machifu wanajua. The decision is yours. You can make it today or tomorrow or when you want. But in the next 10 days, tutauliza report. Na watu wa provincial administration, wewe kama chief, wewe kama mzee nyumba kumi, hauwezi kuwa mahali pale, watoto ndio hawa wanalala kwa mtaro, wengine wanaangaishwa na madawa ya kulevya, na wewe uko pale kama kiongozi we have to work together tuulize pia kanisa setu watu wote wa dini tuungane wazazi sisi wote we make sure that we work together 
towards eliminating alcoholism and drug abuse in the Republic of Kenya. Rais pamoja na naibu wake walizungumza haya waliposhuhudia kufunguliwa rasmi kwa jumba la hospitali ya Kirugoya katika kaunti ya Kirinyaga. Vincent Kirosi Kak Machweo. Na Kinara wa chama cha Waipa Kalonzo Msioka ameelezea hofu kuhusu mgawanyiko wa kisiasa ambao unashuhudiwa kati ya serikali na upinzani. Akizungumza katika eneo la Miumbuni kwenye eneo la Kadhiani kaunti ya Machakos, Kalonzo amesema kuwa uteuzi wa makamishna wa IEBC lazima lazima uwe wa haki na kuwa ni sharti mazungumzo ya pamoja yafanyike. Azimio imekuwa ikikashifu Kenya kwanza kwa kutoweka umakini katika kuangazia masuala kuu yanayohusu maridhiano. Alikuwa ameandamana na mbunge wa Kathiani Robert Mbui, mwenzake wa Mavoko Patrick Makau na Charles Ngona. Ikaibiwa sasa mpaka ndugu yangu Raila amekuwa yeye kazi yake ni kuibiwa. Kuibiwa tu. Lazima tutafute mikakati hata kama ni kurudi kwa hiyo mazungumzo, turudi kwa mazungumzo ili commission hiyo isiwe kitu ya Kenya kwanza peke yao. Commission ya kusimamia uchaguzi wa miaka ijayo haiwezi na mimi na maoni yangu ni kwamba hiyo stand off ifanywe jia kila juu chini hiyo stand off iishe aswa kwa sababu ya swala hili nyeti la kuanzisha na kuwa na na, na, na tume mpya tume ya IBC mpya and the issue was wasimamishe kazi ya kutafuta makamishna wapya pamoja na mwenyekiti wao hatuwezi kuwa na chepukati mwingine Kenya hii lakini ile imenishangaza zaidi ya zote ni baada hii mambo yote tumefanya wabunge wa Kenya kwanza wameshtuliwa wakaambiwa wanataka kuonekana wakipiga kura wakipinga finance bill ndio waone cha mtemakuni mimi nataka kuongea nikiwa hapa miumbuni kadhiani mimi nitaipinga kama kuna kitu mnafanya mwanza na mimi even if it is your voice alone that you are going to descend to this finance bill let your conscience guide you don't go by the numbers because those numbers are deceitful na serikali imemzawadi mwana Riadha Faith Kipiegono kwa ushindi wake duniani baada ya kuvunja rekodi mbili chini ya juma moja. Zawadi alizopokea kutoka kwa serikali zikiwa shilingi milioni tano na nyumba yenye thamani ya shilingi milioni sita. Kipiegono alivunja rekodi za mbio ya mita 1500 nchini Italia na mita 1500 nchini Ufaransa. Wana Riadha wengine waliotunukiwa ni pamoja na Ferdinand Omanyala. <laughs> Congratulations Faith. Kama wahenga ni hafla ya kipekee iliyofanyika katika ikulu ya Nairobi lengo kulikiwa kumvika pete mwanariadha Faith Kipiegon kwa juhudi zake nchini Italia na Ufaransa. With the reward. Now I can hold a house in Nairobi. I was not <laughs> I was not expecting today is the truth. And with the money I can say now I can buy uh, my father a car. Uh -huh. I promise him when, uh, when I was going to break a world record that I'm going to buy a car for him. <laughs> Ikiwa ni hafla iliyojumuisha wanariadha mbalimbali pamoja na Rais William Ruto na naibu wake Rigathi Gashagwa lile kuu lilikuwa kumtunuku Faith Kipiegon kwa ushindi wake wa mbio za Diamond League kule Florence Italia pamoja na mbio za mita 5000 za Paris Ufaransa. She stands as a shining model of consistency, discipline, hard work, as well as family. Faith is a great Kenyan woman, a mother, a wife, and a world champion rolled into one. Akielezea furaha yake baada ya kupokea kitita cha shilingi milioni tano na nyumba yenye thamani ya shilingi milioni sita, Faith Kipiegon alinakili mawazo yake kabla na wakati wa mbio hizo. I was with many Kenyans in uh, Paris. I can say um walinifanya ni uh, walinipea uh, motisha mpaka nikaweka world record. I was not expecting that. 
I remember I told my coach, Nani at I funja record year 5,000. 1406 is not that easy. It's not that easy. But si kwa najua, nitakuwa wa, nitakuwa mwenye um, nita break yo record. I'm still surprised. Ni katika hafla hii ambapo Rais William Ruto alitangaza kuwa yote atakayevunja rekodi duniani atatunukiwa kama njia moja wapo ya kukuza talanta na michezo nchini Any Kenyan who participates in a world event and breaks a world record unlike in the past when there was no recognition going forward for every world record broken by a Kenyan, the government of Kenya is going to award 5 million shillings. Ferdinand Omanyala vile vile ni mmoja waliotunukiwa katika juhudi zake kama mwanariadha wa mbio fupi fupi nchini ikiwamo mbio za mita 100 na 200. Today we also acknowledge Kenya's dramatic improvement in sprints. Courtesy of our great African champion, Ferdinand Omanyala. When I see Omanyala, I see a great future for many young Kenyans, especially in the space of sprints. And I see this one, Eileen, as the future. Thank God I never broke the world record before then, but now at least <laughs> I'll get something. <laughs> and congratulations, Faith. I remember we were together in both the meets and uh, you are really inspiration to everybody around the world and to me also. Um, I just have to request Mr. President, um, I train at Kasarani and the warm-up track is completely worn out. So if we can make that one okay. as we head to the Olympics, that will okay. be a great... Na mkuingineko idadi ya miili iliyofukuliwa kutoka msitu wa Shakahona imepanda na kupita kiwango cha tatu baada ya maafisa wa asasi za usalama kufukua miili 19 Jumanne ya leo. Idadi ya leo ikiwa ya juu zaidi tangu awamu ya tatu ya ufukuzi kuanza wiki jana. Kwenye zoezi la leo kuna ambaye yameokolewa huku idadi ya waliokolewa ikisalia tisini na tano na wale walioripotiwa kupotea wakiwa miasita kuminatatu. Mshukiwa mkuu wa mawaji hayo Paul Mackenzie angali anazuiliwa na polisi. Namna wa udumu wa matatu kutoka eneo la Gatundu Kusini kaunti ya Kiambu wamewalaumu wa udumu wa magari ya teksi kwa ushindani katika sekta hiyo ya uchukuzi ambao wamekosa kufuata kanuni za sheria na halmashauri ya usalama barabarani NTSA Edwin Tumbo ana taarifa zaidi Wahudumu wa matatu kutoka eneo la Gatundu Kusini kaunti ya Kiambu wamewalaumu wa hudumu wa magari ya teksi kwa ushindani katika sekta hiyo ya uchukuzi ambao wamekosa kufuata kanuni na sheria za shirika la usalama barabarani NTSA. Kulingana na viongozi wa chama cha uchukuzi wa umma katika eneo hilo walisema kuwa magari ya teksi ambayo hudumu katika barabara ya Kenyatta mjini Juja kuelekea Gatundu Ufuria kuwabeba abiria katika eneo hilo bila kufuata kanuni za NTSA ambazo weleza wanavyo stahiki kuhudumu. Njuguna Kiruma ambaye ni mwenye kiti wa wameliki matatu alitoa maoni yake kuwa kando na wahudumu wa teksi kukosa kufuata kanuni pia wamechangia serikali kukosa kukusanya ushuru kutoka kwa huduma ya magari ya teksi. Aida aliongeza kuwa wahudumu wa matatu ulipia leseni ya kuhudumu kwenye barabara ambayo washiria eneo la kuhudumu kile ambacho anadai kuwa ni kuwapa nafasi nzuri wa hudumu wa teksi kuna wiri katika biashara hiyo. And they are giving us very unfair competition. You see the difference between a taxi cab and a PSV vehicle is that at a PSV vehicle is allowed to pick and drop along the way. But a taxi vehicle should only pick a passenger from a taxi bay to another tax bay or to another town. The government is losing a lot of money in terms of revenue by not collecting money from the uh, taxi operators even if they are not supposed to operate. 
Kamau Mwigai ambaye ni dereva wa matatu alisema kuwa teksi hubeba abiria wengi kwa vile wa magari yao hayajawekewa vidhibiti mwendo huku wa wakingangana na kanuni ambazo zimewekwa na NTC. Na watu kusema ukweli hawana speed governor hiyo tu gari. Na hizo magari hawa kitu hakuna staka baadhi yote ya barabara wako naye. Peter Wanyoike Utinga na yehudumu katika eneo la Nairobi kuelekea Gatundu alisema anahisi kuwa hali ngumu kwao kwa kufuata sheria kama vile kuvaa sare, baji ya uchukuzi wa umma na cheti cha kuashiria kukubaliwa kuhudumu ili hali wenzao wa teksi kufanya shughuli zao bila sheria hizo. Na kubeba abiria tunapata kuna gari zingine ambazo hazina stakabadhi. Sasa zile gari zinachukua zile majukumu ya kutumia stakabadhi zetu maana wao hawajatoa kitu hata moja hata nauli hawajatoa sasa ndio tunaomba serikali tusaidie wahudumu hao wa matatu sasa wanaisi sekta hiyo ya uchukuzi ikiwa pabaya kutokana na kuzembea kwa NTSA kazini sasa wanataka wahudumu wa teksi kuandikishwa kama wale wa matatu na shirika la NTSA au shirika hilo kuwafurusha wahudumu wa teksi katika biashara hiyo call upon the NTSA to streamline the PSV sector by maybe visiting the concerned people. We are going to mobilize each and every county, even Nairobi, to make sure this thing imeisha. Ama wamatio the right procedure ya kifanya kazi. Na tuna shida na madugu yetu. Wakifanya kazi vile na faa, we don't have any problem. Edwin Tumbo. Namna kulikuwa na kizaza cha mvurugano baada ya wawekezaji wawili eneo la Malindi kuzozana kuhusu umiliki wa kipande cha barabara. Kulingana na mwekezaji mmoja ni kuwa mwenzake anayemiliki mkahawa wa Lepliad Resort alikuwa akimzuilia kufika kipande chake cha ardhi anachotaka kuwekeza. Kulingana na Shelali Abdala anayewakilisha mwenzake mlalamishi ni kuwa wamiliki wa Lepliad walifunga barabara maksudi na wakati mameneja wa hoteli hiyo walitokea kuwa zuia kuingia alishambuliwa na wahuni walioandamana na mwaklishi wa mwenzake mlalamishi Only one person like mislead the entire nation na media fraternity na peer ku insight for no reason. Today ndo tumekuja kama community with our elders na hapa tuko na senior curators na wale leaders ambao walikuwa hapa zamani former councillors former mayors na the reason is one. Hii ni barabara. This is road. Hapa hakuna issue ambayo twa contest eh, ownership ya mtu yoyote. Hii ni public road na ukitaka kujua huyu jamaa hii hapa ameka fence kuonyesha the end of his property na hapa tuko na barabara na mbele ukiangalia far end kule kuna famous club itwa patapata ambayo the government will deport the owner ambayo is the same owner kama huyu ambayo hapa sasa hapa huyu tuko nayo shida tuko nayo malindi sahi ni kwamba wale investors wa thaliani walienda zao wale caretaker they are taking over the properties and they have no history of the properties sasa wao ndio wajaribu kuziba manjia na kusumbua Henry Chivanji he has no by any means arusi hata kuongea na media kwa sababu yuajita manager actually is a shamba boy and caretaker of Italia na hapa na sahi we don't have Italian sahi we have domestic tourism na we are encouraging that. Na investors say we have Kalenjin investors, Kikuyu investors. We have Luya investors. We have Masai investors. So we don't have to have uh, Italians. Vijana watapata kazi, mawapishu wataandikwa hapa. Uchumi ndio huu ambao sahi umepanda. Sahi kuna kuja mtu wanakuja kuziba hii gate. Kwa kweli hiyo siyaki. Kutoka ni zaliwe. Na wakati wa igreza, walipokuwa katika mamlaka. Kabla Kenya hajapata uhuru. 
huku kulikuwa kunajulikana kama njia ya golf club. Hii njia tulikuwa tunapita bila wasiwasi wowote. Lakini to my surprise leo naona kumekwa mawe hapa. What is this? Na mtazamaji hadi kufikia hapo mimi sina la ziada ili ila kukamilisha taarifa hizi za Kak Machweo mwenzangu Vincent Kerosi atakuwa kikujia na mazungumzo kuhusiana tu na uwekezaji pamoja na mikopo akiangazia tu hatua ambazo sako ya PCA imeweza kupiga ni kuanzia tu uh, muda wa saa moja unusu nami itakapogonga saa mbili kamili nitakuwa nakujia na kipindi cha Ecos Diary kwa hivyo mtazamaji endelea kutegea Kak TV ni hayo tu mtazamaji tukutane tena pale ambapo Maulana atajalia kwa sasa kwa heri jina langu ni Aida Munzati